All right, today we're gonna be talking about the RPG-7. Now, before we get started with that, a couple of things I wanna cover. Uh, for your viewer questions, I do have a Dropbox. You can send it right here, and then I'll do a video response to it. Or, like, let's say you're not capable of using Dropbox for whatever reason, or whatever, uh, just make a video, put it as unlisted, and email it to me to the same address as the Dropbox. Second, I got a lot of crap over using this as a pointer. So I got this instead. I don't know if you want to call this a adult toy, but this is what we'll be using. So why exactly has the RPG-7 been around for so incredibly long? As a matter of fact, the, the Americans, us, even copied it. It would be the PSL, PSRL-1, which is basically an exact copy of the RPG-7. What does it do that is so incredibly awesome that keeps it on the battlefield? Well, let's discuss that. First, let's talk briefly about the history. Now, I'm not a historian. We're not going to get into all that crazy stuff. We're just going to talk roughly. All right, so it was designed in 1958. It's seen its first service in 1961, and it's been basically on every single battlefield ever since for a few different reasons. The big ones being simplicity. Like, for example, our AT-4. The RPG-7 uses a hammer fire. We're talking about like revolver tech. Like crazy low tech. Second will be cost. And then what exactly is it? Because, I mean, does it shoot really far? Is it super accurate? No, not at all. The overall max range, because it's actually got a fuse in there, so if it hits a certain distance, the projectile will just explode, is a thousand yards. That's the absolute max you can send a rocket. The real range where you can actually hit targets is like 200 yards and in. I mean, depending on how much practice you have with it, how good you are at it, how good you are at a range call, but sending one single rocket to hit a target, it better be close to them 200 yards or you're likely to miss. Now what it is is a fire and forget system. That basically means is you pull up, you'd aim at your target, you'd hit the trigger, well it'd actually be different because it's not an AT4, you'd hit the trigger, or no, you hit the trigger, and then you send the missile away. As soon as you hit the trigger and it leaves the tube, you can just leave because there's nothing else you can do for that, mi that missile. Now there's a couple of different types. There's some with expanding fins that will come out for stabilization, and there's some without, but they do have the rockets turned off at an angle, or the, the thrusters. This way it'll put a spin on it and help it keep a little bit more accurate. The point is, once it leaves the tube, that's it. You do have your tow style missiles, which is a wire guided missile. The problem with that is, one, they're big, they're heavy, they're hard to get into position, and you have to stay there exposed with the gas and the fire coming out the whole entire time. Where like an RPG, you can pop out, take your shot, and immediately run for cover. Because there's going to be a smoke cloud there, it's going to kick up dust, you're going to see the trail of the rocket. So with the tow, you're sitting there exposed the whole entire time, keeping it on target, because if you move it off target, it will tell the missile to move, no matter where you go. So you've got to keep your sight pointed at the target, it makes you vulnerable. Alright, so what makes the RPG-7 so awesome? Because it's got real crap range, it's hard to hit targets, yeah, fire and forget's pretty awesome. Well, what exactly does it? And that simply all comes down to cost. For example, an AT-4, it's a one-shot unit. You fire it once, you throw the tube, it's done. You're looking at $1,400. Now remember, these prices came from like posts back in like 2002, 2003. Because of the hyperinflation we're seeing right now, I guarantee it's a lot more than $1,400 right now. Your Javelin, which can shoot just an insane distance with pinpoint accuracy. Like... That is the bee's knees of shoulder fire launchers. The whole setup, like let's say you open up a Pelican case, there's a javelin in there, your munition, everything like 
You don't have any pre-existing parts. Everything's right there in the Pelican case. $178,000. Yes, the Javelins were loadable. So what's the munitions? $78,000 per trigger pull. The big joke is usually the Javelins destroy positions, machine guns, stuff like that, that cost less than the rocket itself. So it's like uh, you lose one of that, you basically lost a house. You have an entire house worth of money inside of a Pelican case that can destroy one target. And if you want to reload it, well, there's a garage. You want to reload it again, now you have a, a house, a garage, and a sports car. Like, that's insanely expensive. Your RPG-7. To make the unit is somewhere between $500 and $2,000. I'm assuming that comes down to whether you're utilizing sweatshops or not. The shots, every time you reload it, is somewhere between $100 and $500. Again, it probably all comes down to what, it, what you're using. So how's the explosive itself? Because there's a couple of different types of explosives. You have just the standard explosive, which is gonna use the force, and then you got something called a shape charge. Legend has it, of course I wasn't there, and this was long before our grandpas were born. Somebody was using explosives, and on the explosive it had a name. And they noticed that when the explosive would go off, the name was engraved into exactly what they had the material on. So what a shape charge does is you put your explosive in the shape of a cone. And then you line the inside with like copper or something like that. And when it goes off, it takes all this and it concentrates it right to a point. So a normal explosive, what it does is it blows things up. It uses a percussive blast to destroy things. A shape charge is actually a cutter. It's for cutting. Yes, we are dealing with shape charge today. Shaped charges specifically are anything that you pack into a given shape to create an explosive effect. So with an RPG-7, even though like, let's pretend you paid the max for the launcher, you had $2,000 and you paid the max for the munitions, you got 2,500 total. If they haven't taken measures specifically to defend against a shape charge, which they've done on vehicles, the, the how you beat a shape charge is, is you make it detonate away from you when you have armor, obviously, because if you're a person, it doesn't really matter because the explosion itself will get you, but you make it detonate away, you make it detonate away from you because it has an exact point. They'll do the math and they'll figure out like this right here is the distance we want this little cone of awesomeness to be. That's where it needs to start cutting, that's where it's the strongest, and then we'll push through the material. It will move this little blast cone at 30,000 feet per second. They don't even measure the explosion in feet per second. They measure it in miles per second because it's so incredibly fast. The jet is the molten liner of the shape charge that travels at speeds of six miles per second to penetrate its target with pure kinetic energy. To put that in perspective, a very, very fast rifle round is around 3,500 feet per second. About 4,000 feet per second is about the speed limit of rifle projectiles. So we're looking at 4,000 is like the max you're gonna get from a rifle. This is at 30,000. That's incredible. That's some crazy fast watching. And it literally cuts right through armor. So unless you have something on your armored vehicle that will detonate it, away from your vehicle or you have reactive armor which will put an explosion back which they've countered with the RPG because they put dual shape charges in there. So first one goes off, detonates the reactive armor and then the, the second one cuts through it. Basically, $2,500, that's maximum price, can take down a multi-million dollar battle tank or a multi-million dollar aircraft. And when it comes down to real wars, like actual battles, like World War II, stuff like that, it all comes down to a battle of attrition. Who can make more and quickly? You can make far less javelins over like RPG-7s. So in a battle of attrition, like a real actual conflict, like two militaries going head to head, it always comes down to a battle of attrition. Who can put more on the field, more quickly. We see it in like World War II, they quit doing Tommy guns, they started doing grease guns. The Japanese, they even quit putting butt pads on it and just put in a little scrap of leather because you got to build up, you got to get more and more and more and more and more and who's ever got a better, 
who's ever got the better uh, industry when it comes to construction and making military arms will win. I mean, it's not even a question. Like, even if they are way techno technologically advanced than you, I mean, there are some exceptions, like, say, space aliens come and they're like, doo, 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 doo. that's a little bit different. They got overshields and they're shooting us with freaking lasers. I mean, that, okay, that, that's a, you have to be incredibly technologically advanced to be able to beat a country that has a better production capability. So, we can make like just a small amount of javelins and for sure take out a single battle tank, or we can arm like a whole regiment of people with RPG 7s and they do a barrage down on this convoy and completely decimate it. Like, that's why you're looking at the RPG 7 not going anywhere because it's just incredibly cheap and it's incredibly easy to make and it's effective. Even though it's cheap, it's still packing a shape charge or in some cases a dual shape charge which can go up against the biggest and baddest of armor. It'll cut right through it because a shape charge is a cutter. It's not just an explosive. It's designed specifically to cut armor. Anyway, I hope that enlightened you because the RPG-7 is kind of a cool piece of war tech. It's hung around for so many years. and I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on it, what it is and what makes it awesome. Anyway, if you like to help support the channel, got my Patreon right there. I also have affiliate links in the description down below. Just by clicking on those links, even if you don't purchase what that particular link is for, just clicking on it and doing the Amazon shopping you were already going to do anyway, I'll kick back for it because you came there off my channel. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.